I don't the know. Looking at it, uh, looking at it, uh, I am not a mystical person. I, I am I'm a Christian and a very true believer. But I, but I think it looks like there is a jinx around this office of the deputy president. And um, <coughs> President William Ruto had a very rough time with the president of Kenyatta. Right. But luckily for him, he had five years to work and worked very well without any disturbance. President William Ruto gave a promise, a commitment to the people of Kenya. When he was complaining the way he was persecuted, he was mistreated, he was demeaned, he was harassed. He gave a commitment to the people of Kenya that under his watch, if they elect him as president, his deputy will never be demeaned, his deputy will never be harassed, his deputy will never be persecuted, his deputy will never be disrespected, and his deputy will be facilitated to work and work well. For the first year, that happened, and I'm grateful to him because he did not allow anybody to disrespect me. He did not allow anybody to interfere with my work. But the second year, I must tell you, that is happening. You know, cabinet ministers have been abusing the deputy president. Just the way it was happening during the time of Uru Kenyatta. You remember Tobiko called President William Ruto a clerk. Matiangi wrote him a message that called him an idiot. And people disrespected him. People were intimidated. People were harassed. And President William Ruto made a commitment to the people of Kenya that if he is elected president, it will never happen that his deputy will be disrespected. Today, the deputy president is abused by people hanging on his car, and the president is quiet. Cabinet ministers have been abusing the deputy president, the president is quiet. The president has given many promises to the people of Kenya. Some of them he has not been able to fulfill them because of the difficult economic situations that we are in, and it's understandable. But there's one promise he gave to the people of Kenya that requires no finance. It requires nothing. It requires him to be a gentleman, and keep that promise, the promise he gave the people of Kenya, that under his presidency, his deputy will not be abused, his deputy will not be disrespected, his deputy will not be intimidated, his deputy will not be persecuted, his deputy will not be harassed. That, I think, the president, my boss, owes that to the people of Kenya to honor that promise so that Kenyans can trust him and he can win the trust of the people of Kenya because this is something within his purview. He requires no funding, he requires no financing, he requires no urging. It's a commitment he gave. And he also gave it to me right. with my wife and my children when he asked me to be his running mate. I sat with him and my wife and my children and we asked him, we have seen what you have gone through. If our father becomes your deputy, will he be taken through what you are taken through? And he gave us as a family a very firm commitment that that would never happen. I'm asking President William Ruto, my boss, please keep your promise to the people of Kenya. Stop those people who are abusing your deputy. Stop those ministers who are demeaning your deputy. Don't allow the criminal justice system to harass and intimidate your deputy the way you are intimidated. If you cannot keep the other promises to the people of Kenya, at least this one is a very simple promise. Be a good man. Be a good Christian. Keep that promise, President William Ruto, because that is a commitment you give to the people of Kenya, and you gave me that promise in front of my wife and children that you will never allow anybody to demean me, to disrespect me, to harass me, to persecute me, to intimidate me, to coerce me. That is a commitment that you gave. I ask you, Mr. President, keep that commitment. Are you frustrated? I'm not. I am, uh, let me tell you, son, you don't know me. Many people don't understand Rigati Kashagua. Rigati Kashagua is a seasoned leader who has seen many ups and downs. I underwent hell in the last administration to support President William Ruto. Cases were fabricated against me for studying with President William Ruto. My wealth was confiscated for studying with William Ruto. But I'm a very, very, very 
principled man. I stood with him to the last man. I never expected this to happen. You know, my family is devastated. You know, that this can be happening to their father. A man who went out of his way to start with President William Ruto and make sure he's elected president and took the flag for it. And I say, even if there is a jinx around this position, at least President William Ruto was allowed to do his work for five years without interruption, without harassment, for five years. I have only done one year. And what is happening to me is worse than what happened to President William Ruto. I asked President William Ruto, please allow me to work. Allow me to work for the remaining three years. Let me serve the people of Kenya. Okay. Let me serve the people of Kenya and keep your promise. Keep your promise, Mr. President, so that you can win the trust of the people of Kenya as an honest person, as a person who keeps his promise. What is happening is not right. It doesn't augur well, and it has, to a great extent, eroded the trust of the people of Kenya in your leadership. Please, Mr. President, I am here willing to work to serve you with the dedication, to serve the people of Kenya, to support you the way I've always done, to undertake whatever responsibilities that you assign me. But let the insults in your presence stop. Let people not hold night meetings. Let this money that is being used for these meetings assist us to pay okay. pending bills, Mr. President. People are suffering. Resources are being mobilized to do politics to divide the people of Mount Kenya region, to fight the deputy president. When Kenyans are suffering, mm -hmm. when we are collecting taxes from people and we are saying we don't have enough, how come millions of shillings are being mobilized across the country to fight your deputy president, to undermine his work, to divide the people of Mount Kenya region for political purposes? I think this is the lowest movement of our administration, but I am hopeful that this can be corrected and all of us can go back to work, and the people of Kenya can be given an opportunity mm -hmm. to enjoy the fruits okay. of their vote to the president and I. Right, and I'm sure the president will get your message. Now, what was your role in the 